Hey guys, Dr. Paul here. In this video, I'm gonna show you the steps that we took to do a sectional extraction of a tooth number four six or the lower right-hand side molar. Now this patient came in with a really large infection and swelling on her right-hand side. After some examination and a 3D X-ray, we determined that it was coming from that first molar. When I felt around the tooth, I could actually feel that there was a large area down the gum where the bone was just not attached at all. And after we worked out a few things, we realized that this tooth most likely had what we call a vertical root fracture. So there was a crack all the way through the tooth, down through the root, it had had it. Basically the only treatment that we have available is we have to take the tooth out. For a tooth like this, because it's so brittle and so fragile, if you try and grab it and take it out, it's most likely gonna break. If it breaks, it makes the extraction very difficult. So what we do is we actually almost preemptively break it ourselves and we call that sectioning. You take the crown of the tooth off first and then you cut the roots into two separate pieces and you get them out separately. If you can do it in a controlled way, it makes the process a whole lot easier. So in this video, you see how I took the crown off to start with, how I sectioned the crown of the tooth, how I sectioned the roots, there was a small hiccup along the way, but we got the whole thing out. The patient's now feeling a whole lot better. So I hope you enjoy it. So to get started, I'm just tapping on the tooth, making sure that she can't feel any pain. And then I'll use my periodontal probe just to feel around the gum, same sort of thing, making sure that she can't feel that at all. Now, the first thing that I do is to use my luxator to get some movement from the tooth. And this is my small luxator first. Even though we are gonna be sectioning this tooth and taking it out in pieces, I wanna get it moving before I start that process. Uh, after my small one, I'll use the larger one, and I'm just trying to get as much movement as I can before we actually start the sectioning. So you can see here, we're getting a little bit of movement there of the crown of the tooth, uh, just in between the bone and the tooth on the mesial. Now it comes time to actually section the crown off first. So how I'm doing that is by cutting through the porcelain first with a specific ceramic burr. Uh, so there's different burrs that you can get based on the material. This one's more for ceramic, so it cuts through that quite easily. And then after I use this one, I then switch to a tungsten carbide burr, which is more for the metal. Now you'll notice that I haven't actually cut all the way through this just because you don't have to. So I always, I'll cut through one side and then I'll cut through the top of the tooth. And then you'll see when I lever it off, it'll come off in one piece. So it actually makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I can as well do this without having to look too much. I'm doing it more by feel. So if I feel that I cut through the metal and I'm now down into the tooth, then I know that I've gone far enough and I'll move along to the next little bit. And I also use my mirror to double check too. Then I'll use my walls carver just with a little bit of a twisting motion to see if I can get it separated. And I got a little bit of a, a separation there, but not as much as I wanted. So I then use my luxator and it's hard to tell from this video, but when you do do it, you'll, you'll be able to see when it actually lifts off slightly and then just finding that right spot to actually just get it off. And it comes off really, really easily. Now, when it comes to sectioning roots, we don't want there to be too much crown height above the gum. And this comes down to basically vision and access. Uh, the closer we are to gum level, uh, basically it makes it easier for us to be able to see down in between the roots and also use a burr. That, it doesn't have to be too long to get down in between the roots. So I'm just taking the top of the tooth off down to around the level of the gum or maybe about a millimeter above that. So now it actually comes time to section the roots and I'm basically doing this by direct access coming from the side of the tooth itself. Now you wanna go in between the roots and making sure that you are on the right angle. So you do wanna use an X-ray for this because you don't wanna find that you end up cutting into the root rather than right between them. So there is a certain point that you need to be. So basically I'm going down to the depth that's required, which again, you can measure off of the X-ray. And you'll notice as well that I'm not going all the way to that buckle or that lingual side. I do leave a bit of tooth structure there, which is like a safety buffer. Then I'll check with my mirror to see any areas where there's still some tooth that's there. And then I'll take that out in this next little phase, um, which is basically just finishing off the sectioning really. Then the next little bit is with my luxator. Now this is really, really important that you get the luxator really far down in between these roots. If you are too coronal, you can end up basically breaking the roots. And you definitely don't wanna do that because you'll have a really tough time getting those root tips out. So go down really far in between the roots when you do actually come to putting this twisting in. Now the other thing you'll notice as well is that I spend quite a bit of time at this stage. I'm not in any rush here. Uh, the more time that you can actually spend with the roots in place, the better that you can get that stretching of the PDL fibers to happen. So make the most of these two roots still being there because you can push them against each other. Once one of those roots is gone, you don't really have as much levering effect, so make the most of it. After I've been doing this for a bit of time, then I'll actually move to the forceps. But like I said, don't rush this, take your time, get them moving against each other till, till you're pretty confident that you can get it out quite easily. Now here I'm using some forceps, basically it is some single root forceps. I'm using my left hand to help position the actual beats of the forceps down as far as I can onto these roots. The further down that I am, the less likely that they are going to break. 
The other thing that you'll notice here as well is that although I am getting quite a bit of movement of this root, I don't want it to break. If this root tip breaks, then it just makes my job more difficult and I don't really want that. So I'm just taking my time doing very, I guess, slow and gentle movements, left, right, back and forth, uh, twisting, some figure eight movements as well. There's probably a point that you'll think, hey, why don't you just pull this root out? I just don't want it to break. So I'm slowly moving it towards that cheek side. That's the way that it feels like it wants to come out. It's a bit easier when you're right-handed as well. So I'm just taking my time slowly just kind of twisting again figure eight circular movements taking it over to that right side each time i'm going further and further and then eventually it'll get to a point where you're like okay i know now that i can push it to the limit and i can get this guy out which is around this time here now it comes to the mesial root and you'll notice that the top half of the root actually has fractured this isn't a big surprise because this tooth did have a vertical root fracture and this is most likely the point where that was uh, now, basically what I'm doing here is I'm assessing how much of the root is actually above the bone to see if I can luxator it out. Sometimes I don't need to remove any bone, so I always try to without first. So I'm just taking my luxator around, but unfortunately I'm just not getting the movement that I need to. So I don't stuff around for too long with this. Once I know that I'm not getting any movement, then I'll just uh, use my same burr that I used before to remove the bone that's around this root. So this is called bone guttering. Basically, you're just making a gutter of bone around the root just to give it more space to come out when you do actually come to luxating it. So you're just creating space for the root to come out and less bone that's actually holding it in place as well. So I'm going about probably a millimeter or a millimeter and a half apical to the very top part of the root. And then I come back to my luxators. And luxator, I'm, I'm going from any point that I can just grab onto it basically, or I can use that levering motion. And I think in the end, it, it came from that buckle aspect, um, but you just need to find a point that you can see that it's moving and take your time. Uh, if you rush this, then you get impatient, but you'll find that there's a point where eventually you're just working, 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 and then boom, it'll come up. So you just gotta be patient with this little bit. And it was nice to see that it hadn't broken, it's all in one piece. Then, because we have removed some bone in between these teeth, that bone is quite sharp. It can also lead to little pieces or flecks of it coming out and annoying the patient while it's healing. So I'm just taking a round burr to basically smooth off the bone in this area, just to help with healing, just so there aren't any little sharp bits that flick out. Once I've done this, I then give it a rinse with some chlorhexidine. So this uh, product here is called Savicol. This has been shown to help reduce dry socket. And then I'll leave a little bit in my syringe to put on a piece of gauze that I'll get the patient to bite down onto for about half an hour and then we are done. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Now if you're a dental student or a dentist, I hope you got something out of it in terms of tips, little things that I do that can make your life easier when it comes to you doing the same procedure. Or if you're just from the general public and you like watching these videos, or if you have this procedure coming up, again, I hope you got something out of it and it didn't scare you too much. If you did enjoy it, please like, share, subscribe. Those things help me out a lot. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and keep on smiling.